Hello, today we're going to talk about critical numbers. Critical numbers are a concept of calculus, and the definition is we're going to let f, a function, be defined at some value c. c is in the domain of the function f. If the first derivative evaluated at c is equal to 0, or if the function is not differentiable at c, then c is said to be a critical number of the function f. Because we're looking for values where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist, our strategy is going to be, first we're going to find the derivative of the function. Next, we're going to find all values that make the derivative undefined or not defined. And finally, we're going to find all values that make the derivative equal to zero. For this particular example, we're going to find the critical numbers of the function h of x equals sine squared of x plus cosine of x on the interval 0 less than x, which is less than 2 pi. The first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of h. To find the derivative, we remember that sine squared of x is sine of x all squared. This will lead us to the chain rule. Take the derivative of sine of x squared to get 2 sine of x, and then don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is our cosine of x. Moving on, plus cosine of x, the derivative will be uh, minus sine of x, and we have our derivative. Because sine and cosine are always defined on this particular interval, we will have our derivative always defined on this interval. There are no points of discontinuity of the first derivative. We move on to setting the derivative equal to zero. And at first, I just rewrite zero equals two sine x cosine x minus sine x. To solve this, I see that both terms have a sine x in common, and so I factor that out. Once I factor out a sine x, I'm left with 2 cosine of x minus 1. 1 is my placeholder after I factored out my sine of x. Using the zero factor property, we now have that sine of x is equal to 0, or 2 cosine of x minus 1 is equal to 0. For many students, this is now the hard part. The calculus is over, finding the derivative. It comes down to trigonometry. So let's look at sine of x is equal to 0. If you remember the sine graph, you know that it starts at 0, 0, rises, falls, and comes back to the starting point. This tells us that sine of x is equal to 0 when x is 0, pi, and 2 pi. Based on our interval given, we will not include 0 or 2 pi, so x equals pi is the only solution of sine of x equals 0 that is in our interval. Looking at the second piece, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0, we could add 1 and divide by 2 in order to get cosine of x equals 1 half. Knowing your reference angles will help you here. Cosine of x equals 1 half at a reference angle of 60 degrees, but we're in terms of radians, so we're going to call that pi over 3. A pi over 3 reference angle uh, will give us positive in quadrants 1 and 4, Therefore, pi over 3 is in quadrant 1, and a reference angle of pi over 3 in quadrant 4 will give us a solution of x equals 5 pi over 3. Combining these answers, we have our critical points. Excuse me. We have the critical numbers, not the points, as pi over 3, pi, and 5 pi over 3. If we wanted to find critical points, we would now plug these x values, all three of them, into our original function and find the y values that go with them. That is finding critical numbers.